what's up guys and girls this is Phil Ebner with videoschoolonline.com bringing you another video creator spotlight today I'm chatting with Evan Abrams of evanabrams.com and his YouTube channel search Evan Abrams in YouTube and you'll find a channel full of amazing After Effects tutorials I've learned so much from him and I really look up to him it was a blast chatting with him. We talked for over an hour and all of his stuff is golden. We talked about all sorts of different things from After Effects, starting a YouTube channel, teaching online, making money online, how to improve your videos. So check out each video. I've separated the interview out into six individual videos. So once you're done with this one, move on to the next one. Thanks a lot and here's Evan. I started working with After Effects long, long ago when I was still in uh, high school in uh, the public education system, they thought, wouldn't it be a good idea to have kids make videos about things? So they bought a license for, this would have been pre-CS1, I guess, so back when everything still had its own numbers, and they didn't, so they bought the stuff, but the only editing stuff in the high school were like VHS and Betamax, so they had like a linear editing suite for that, and nobody in the school knew how to teach After Effects or Premiere or Final Cut or anything, so there was no, no one's going to tell you how to do this stuff. Right. So th this is back in like grade nine, so since the focus of the education was, well, everyone has to make videos now, and they bought a whole bunch of cameras and they're just trying to get everybody to go out and do this we had to teach ourselves so that was like the first time i'd ever opened up after effects and anyone who's a first time user knows that it's a terrifying program and it's not fun um it's got windows that make no sense about what they do you're looking at things that span both time and space and four-dimensional math is hard so there was a really steep learning curve, but thankfully it allowed me to produce a lot of crap very early. And uh, I think anyone who is doing this is going to produce a lot of crap early on in their career. And a lot of people go on to produce crap later in their career as well. The only difference is eventually you get paid for making garbage. So that's, uh, that's about where it started. Uh, when I started actually like using it as like a, a tool in, instead of a toy was when... I was in a university co-op program, and I got a very lucky position at, it's, uh, I think it's called Army Multimedia now, but at the time it had some weird distinction here in Ottawa, where uh, basically co-op programs, uh, if anyone is currently in post-secondary education or they're thinking about post-secondary education, you should get into something that has a co-op program, because you're going to be actually doing real work for four months out of every eight so that's a good way to learn quickly. And so in this uh, army program, uh, we're basically creating a news program. And anyone who has worked in news knows that it is a very sink or swim environment. Um, they're always producing things really tight to time. And uh, it's, it's very, uh, it's very, like it, it's done is better than perfect, I guess is what you say. But uh, it's a lot of long hours and it's a lot of deadlines. So you get used to producing a high volume of work consistently over time. So there I basically showed up and they said, uh, well, you expressed an interest in editing. You are now an editor for this. Um, you mentioned in your interview that you touched After Effects once, so you're, you're now the guy who does that in the office. And uh, we expect to see you know, these maps with some arrows by the end of the day. You know, so it's it's the kind of thing where they they hold you up to uh, what you say you can do, and then you better deliver it. So those were where I, I got to actually make things, and the difference between I guess making your own student films or whatever you're making, and then making something that a producer tells you to make is that you're going to be held to somebody else's standards, and you get ch it changes from being. Uh, an art where you sit around and then maybe something from the ether will inspire you to you're going to get a goal, you're going to get a challenge, you're going to use your skills to solve this problem, right? So we move into a problem solving area where you can really focus your focus your learning and your own independent sort of study of things where you know, it's not so much it's not as is uh I don't know, it's not as ethereal, it's, it's really concrete, you know. I'm going to do this by finding solutions to these problems to communicate these ideas. 
Anyway, uh, so that was about it. Uh, after the co-op program ended, uh, I just went on to complete what was actually a communications and marketing degree uh, because I didn't think, you know, making videos is fun and everything. But I just watched Mad Men and I thought I should do that for a career because that's a great program. And uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, after then after university, I went into, actually did a marketing job for a while. Um, but on the side, I was always picking up clients and doing my own creative work, um, just cause I guess I wanted to, I wanted to be Don Draper faster. So I have, to, if I'm going to do that, I need to take creative control of stuff. So, uh, that was good. And I just continued to freelance until it took up too much of my time and I had to quit my day job. So that's about uh, the story of how I got here, I guess. That's awesome. You got really deep about After Effects there. I appreciate it. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so what kind of, so, and then how did you get into uh, teaching uh, After Effects on YouTube? Yeah, so that started, uh, that would have been still while I was with the Army, I guess. Um, so After Effects is a confusing program. It was confusing for me. And since I was, I was self-taught, I guess I wanted to sort of, in a way, I wanted to brag about what I was doing. Um, there's a bit of a vanity in the earlier um, tutorials, um, but they mostly spawned out of a strategy. We were creating, we were trying to create our own like content, a bunch of us, and we thought, well, if we have multiple videos that point to the content, it'll be better, right? So this is, I guess, talking about a bit of YouTube strategy. If you look at the early precursors, uh, the, the early adopters of YouTube, you got people like the Freddie W's and the Corridor Digitals who basically set a template for what's expected on early YouTube content. And that would be videos that link to each other and sort of this thing that you're going to see a grand piece of content and then videos that will explain how that content was made. So that was where the earlier tutorials of mine came from, was trying to explain the content that we were doing uh, on other things. However, uh, it turned out the tutorials were way more popular than the actual content itself, uh, which is probably a testament to tell just how horrible our, our script writing and uh, I guess my, I don't know. The problem with After Effects is like, the effects you put on something are only going to be as good as the content you're watching. If the content is crap, you can't put enough window dressing on it to make it good, right? So the tutorials were, were starting out as, as just a, a way to push traffic around, but they got enough of a response from people that, you know, they seemed like they were actually helping folks, uh, which was new to me because I'm usually hindering people uh, with my presence. So, I don't know, it was, just, it was nice to see that uh, folks who are trying to start out on their own, just like I was, were getting something from the tutorials, so I figured, well, I should keep on trying to help them out. Um, the only thing I had ever taught before that was uh, Taekwondo. I'm pretty good at that. But uh, I was teaching that to kids, and that's like the only time I'd ever like taught something to somebody else. And it's a very gratifying feeling that you know you put information into someone, and then they get the idea, and then they're doing it. So uh, I really liked the, just that feedback that students are having a good time and they're making something useful. And I would encourage in the earlier videos, you know, share what you've made, kind of thing. So that was that was good, and it really motivated me because in the early days. Uh, the tutorials generated mm, nothing economically, so it was it was totally for just for the joy of doing it. So that's uh, that's where that started. Cool. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about um, the YouTube channel and the success of that <laughs> and some tips a little bit later. Uh, but and something that you just mentioned kind of leads into this next question about. My question was, how can motion graphics or using After Effects improve people's video quality and why is it important to, to learn these skills? You mentioned how the content of the video, you know, if the content of the video is not great, then whatever you do in After Effects isn't really going to, um, I guess the content of the video has to be good in order for the After Effects work or the motion graphics to be good, but do, it, yeah. do you have more thoughts about that? Yeah, so... 
Uh, this came back to a lot of things I was doing um, 